Word comes there's a hop toad and it's on the ground, worse somewhere in the ditch. Then it's time to put down the jam nuts. Don't worry about beans, they'll bring those to you. Time to get the big hook and earn some mountain pay. Uh, cut, 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 cut. What, what, what are you talking about? This okay. is off script, this is off script. <laughs> a hop toad is a derailment. Puts the train on the ground and not the tracks, that's bad. Worse, some are in the ditch. Put down the jam nuts, that's donuts. No eating for you on break. Beans, that's breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Don't worry about going to it. They'll bring it to you, kind of like buying pizza for the crew. And, of course, mountain pay, that meant overtime. The big hook, that was the wrecker, and there it is. And that's our topic for today. Thanks for joining us today as we have another one of our exclusive visits to the Lake Spear Railroad Museum, exclusive because you're the only people that can come here by these video tours. We're shut down for a while, as just about everything else is, but every day, a new one of these vignettes is put online. You can help us. First of all, like it, and that'll mean that you'll be informed when a new one comes out. Share it with your friends and neighbors. And if you want to binge watch and get them all back to back, just go to DuluthTrains.com slash video tours. Back in the day when there was a derailment, a hop toad, the usual way to respond was with a lot of men and some block and tackle and whatever horses you could find. That was how they cleaned up wrecks. What happens though when all of a sudden railroad equipment becomes a lot heavier and bigger? Well now you need something heavier and bigger to clean up the mess. In 1883 the industrial works of Bay City, Michigan made the first wrecker derrick and they improved on it by making it on the rails so it could go to wherever the wreck was. And of course that spawned competitors. Some of the bigger names in the business besides the industrial works of Bay City, Michigan, which premiered the wrecker, was the Besiris Erie Company out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Or the American Hoist and Derrick Company was very big out of St. Paul. And they all basically made the same thing. Cranes, jammers, wreckers that could go on the railroad tracks and move to where the wreck was. Because now the equipment was bigger and couldn't be handled just by man and horse alone. They would often put one wrecker on either end of the wreck and they would work towards each other. So a company like a railroad would need several of these to be able to dispatch. What if they were in the same place? They would build what was known as a shoe fly around the wreck site so that one wrecker could get on the one side, one could get on the other, and they could start working together. And the reason they did that was that main line had to be cleared. That was business that was jammed up on either side of the wreck. So clearing the line was first and foremost once they took care of any injured people that may have been involved. This is one of the latter models made by Industrial Works of Bay City, Michigan. It's NP number 38 in the collection of the Lake Superior Railroad Museum. This is a modest sized wrecker, steam powered and had a 75 ton lift to it. That means it could pick up something weighing 75 tons. The way the wrecker would work is it would be pushed into position there would be supports that came out from the side that would allow it to give some stabilization. And then the crew up in the cab went to work picking up the pieces and moving them off the track. Let's see how they did that. One of the neat things about these tours that we're giving you video wise on the Lake Spear Railroad Museum is that <laughs> even if we were open, you couldn't get up in the cab here to see what this is like and what the controls are to run this incredible contraption, the wrecker. It had to be one of the worst jobs in the railroad had to be hot in here. You're against the clock to get this wreck cleared off the main line as fast as you can. And there's no real control explanation. I mean, you just got to know what to do and you got to feel it. A lot of it came with practice, much practice. These levers, of course, would raise or lower the boom, would, uh, of course, raise or lower the hook, and then swivel the entire cab around to reach and grab whatever it was that had to be either picked up or deposited elsewhere. Interesting, the boiler, steam power, so you had to be hot back here too. Well you're running the machine, somebody else is stoking the boiler. And this interesting piece of equipment right here is called a hydrostatic lubricator. And what it did was it put oil into the steam to lubricate the pistons because this was steam powered, of course, you had to have oil in all the pistons to make the cables turn, rotate the turret, and of course raise and lower the boom and the hook itself. All that was done with the hydrostatic oiler right here. A very tough job and very demanding. This is one of two wreckers that we have here at the Lake Superior Railroad Museum. I'll show you the other one. 
This is the other record in our collection. It's the BN-161. It was built in 1915 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin by the Cyrus Erie. And it worked at a shipyard until 1930. That's when the Northern Pacific bought it used. And they used it in their wrecking crews right up until 1960 and beyond. In 1960, though, they took out the steam boiler and the pistons and put in a diesel engine. And that made it a little more modern and that allowed it to last longer on the uh, railroad when it was finally donated to the Lake Superior Railroad Museum. I want to point out something on this. You notice there are two hooks. The larger hook is obviously called the main hook, and the second one is the auxiliary. When they talk about what the lifting capacity of a crane was, in this case 165 tons, they're talking about what the main hook can pick up, 165 tons. The auxiliary hook could not lift near that amount, but it had the added advantage of being at the end of the boom, which meant it could swing further out to grab other pieces of equipment and bring them into play, or to take smaller pieces of the wreck further away from the main line. I hate talking about train wrecks because they're kind of depressing. The thing I'd like to point out is that train wrecks are extremely rare these days, and the railroads no longer have their own wrecking crews. When a train derails today, they'll call in outside help. Pulcher, for instance, comes to mind to come in and do the cleanup for them. And that's all they do. On a moment's notice, they travel anywhere in the United States and around the world to clean up somebody else's mess. Where you are going to clean up and do exactly what you need to do, which is wash your hands, right? And then don't touch your face, cover your coughs, and please keep some social distance, except when you have to take care of each other.